I reckon it's time we made a new Pokemon. So a few months ago, I made this Magnemite, um, and to be fair, since then, he's been a bit neglected. Um, I haven't really been using him as part of my team, so he's turned into a bit of a rusty chunk of scrap, really. But I think for this next project, I'm gonna up the odds and probably the difficulty level, and I'm gonna try and make myself... A Steelix. So first things first, this is what we're starting with. All of them, besides this one, are solid steel and they are very heavy. The biggest I could go was this because I've got to be able to physically fit them inside the door of my forge. So I can't actually go any bigger than this. But the plan is, I'm going to heat all of these up, weld a piece of steel on so I can hold them, and then I'm going to squash them in the power hammer until they're all sort of crumpled and flattened on each side and make them look a little bit more rock-like, like the actual Steelix body design. And then, like I say, the ball for the head is hollow, and I'm basically going to be trying to do some more precise forging to try and get the Steelix head right. But first things first, I need to weld a piece of steel onto each of these and start forging them into shape. And then the last one here I need to forge down into a spike for the tail. So let's do it. Well that was a lot of forging. In fact, this propane bottle was new and I've now used up probably best part of nine kilograms in two small forging sessions. Here is where we are up to so far. As you can see, we've got the rough shape sorted out. Next step will be to cut off all of these sections I'd welded on earlier. And then I believe it's this one, this one and this one actually need more spikes welded on. But I'm going to shape those up and weld them on separately uh, because I figure trying to shape the ones that are already attached is just going to be too awkward because I won't be able to get a good grip on the balls. But I think I'm going to leave it there for today because I'm shattered. In order to get these off, I think I'm going to do it the lazy way and put them straight in the chop saw and just saw them straight off. It's going to be easier than mucking around with the angle grinder and getting it all set up with the right disc. And there we are with all the handles cut off. Uh, don't worry about the finish yet, um, I am going to do these up properly with a wire brush once I've finished welding the other parts on. Uh, so this is not how it's going to look. Do not worry, I know it looks terrible. Well, there we are with all of these spikes forged out, now it's just a case of welding them on. And I've gone and bought myself a new toy! Let's give this thing a try. Well guys, what can I tell you? When you're right, you're right. I've been resisting the urge to buy a new welder for a very long time, but I finally gave in and Oh boy, I cannot believe the difference between the MIG welder I've just bought and the old ARC welder I've been using. Don't get me wrong, it's still a cheap one, and I'm still making no excuse for my bad welds, but oh my god, it's easier. Well, with the body done, it's time to move on to the head. 
Right, here's what I've come up with. The ball I'm going to be using for the head has a diameter of 100 millimeters, and I basically need to find out what half of the circumference is. Now, I've been doing a bit of crunching with figures, as you can see down the side here, and assuming my math is right, half of the circumference comes to about 157 millimeters. Now, what I've done is I've measured from this point here to this point here, and I've made that 157 millimeters. I've left a width of 40 millimeters, and the idea is I'm going to be trying to hammer this section into a kind of sort of semicircular shape, which will run around the outside of the ball here going across the front. I've then tried my best to kind of predict how if I can hammer the steel into a certain way I can kind of roughly get the shape of Steelix's head. Now annoyingly Steelix has got a very complicated shaped head so I don't think there's going to be a particularly perfectionist way of doing this. It's going to be a bit of trial and error, heating, bending, whacking and basically getting it to how I want it. So I'm going to cut this shape out. I might actually leave a bit of additional material sort of round each side here but I'm going to cut the shape out on paper, I'm going to transfer it across the steel, I'm going to angle grind it out and then I'm going to start heating it and trying to shape it as best I can. This is very much an experiment. Wish me luck. Well, there it is with the design transferred over. Now we've just got to cut it out. And this is not an easy shape to grind. First bit done. Well, that didn't work. So yeah, a lot of time has passed since I last worked on this guy. Uh, this was as close as I could get this shape, and it's not close. I mean, yeah, all right, at a glance, you might recognize it as Steelix, but it's, it's too difficult to form this stuff. So I'm gonna try a new tact and basically start again from scratch on the head. So I'm just gonna get on with it. Montage time.
Alright, so we are making some good progress on this guy. It's actually going smoother than I anticipated. Now you're probably wondering what the tooling I made was for. And basically, on the bottom of Steelix's head, he's got these strange sort of point things, which I figure are probably going to be a nightmare to try and weld together. So instead the idea is I'm going to be using the bottom part of the dome which I cut off, and I'm going to be heating it up and I'm going to be stretching it, because at the moment it obviously only fits here, and I want it to sort of come out and fit around this line here, so it comes right up underneath his jaw. Then once I've got this a bit flatter and a bit more stretched out, it's going to be over to the tooling here, and using a combination of this sort of punch and the form underneath, I'm going to be trying to punch in the four sort of spiky things he's got. Or at least that's the idea. I don't know if this is going to work. I really hope it does, because this would save me a lot of time. I've enlisted a helper. No, I don't want to be a helper. Huh? I don't want to be a helper. Why not? Much cleanup required. There you go, there's the idea. There we go, that's got the lip slash chin more or less welded up. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Well, I grant you, Steelix is now looking a little bit odd with the, uh, the back of his head calf. The next step I need to do is put the entire head in the forge, and where we've got these convex angles, we need to actually make them more concave. So I'm only going to be hitting on the very back here and just trying to sort of dimple this in a little bit. And then it'll be a case of cutting out a back plate to this template and welding it on. And hopefully we should be more or less there. But best made plans and all that. I have a feeling this isn't going to go that smoothly, but we'll see. Mean. So the next step is to put this 10mm piece of plate steel in the forge and bend it slightly so that it matches up along all the edges. Uh, and then it's a case of welding it together and then shaping. And hopefully then we're pretty much done. Okay, quite a bit too much there. Let's flatten that out a bit. Perfect. That'll do. Still hot through a Right. I think that's as best I can get the welding, so it's a case of waiting for that to cool down and then grinding it all off and getting it to the shape I want. I feel like this is going to be quite a lot of work. Well, with the amount of grinding I've been doing, I guess this was inevitable, but uh, yeah, that one sucks. That's going to need a proper clean out. It's always typical that you hurt yourself right as you're about to finish. Literally, all I had left to do was to shrink this side down to be the same as this prong. Oh well, I'm still going to finish it. And with that, the head is pretty much done. Uh, I think I'm going to whack it back in the forge just to uh, give all of this the forge scale finish so it's kind of uniform over the whole thing. I then need to grind back in over the eyes and the teeth just to make them sort of shine. Oh, and his little nostrils there. And then, yeah, whilst um, I tried to make Magnemite to scale, obviously this guy couldn't be made to scale, otherwise he'd be as big as my house. However, even as a, well, let's say small model, it's still pretty massive. So I think I'm going to do the finish on the head tomorrow, give the rest of the body a clean, and then weld it into 
a shape I like. Change my mind again. I'm gonna put this in the forge and do the forge finish now. PJT forging used burner attack. It was super effective. I've gotta say, he doesn't look very impressed, does he? Anyway, here we go. Just being careful, this doesn't explode. Because even though there are small holes, as you can see the steam escaping through, it's pretty enclosed and I don't want it to explode under the pressure. <laughs> I don't know if that would work or if that would happen, but I ain't taking that chance. I mean, damn, check this guy out. I must admit, I'm pretty pleased with that. That is about as impossible a shape as you can get for metalwork, so yeah, not displeased, not unproud, if those are real words. I've decided to stick the uh, balls back in the forge as well, just because they've been sat up on the uh, top of my shelf there for over a year. They've become fairly rusty, so again, we'll just give it a uniform finish before we weld it all together. That is a big chunk of solid steel though, and it takes a long time to heat up. Well, that's all of the body parts out of the forge, quenched and sprayed in oil while still hot to give a sort of dark finish. Uh, unfortunately, the oil does also become very smoky, which I'm sure is really good for my lungs. Oh well, that's it, done, and now the rest tomorrow. Okay, it's the next day. Let's get this guy welded up. So what I'm hoping, if I do this right, is I can get this guy to stand up. So I've just got to try and figure out the angle. So I want the tail to be coming out acting as one point of a triangle. One of the spikes on the ball can be another point. And then the same thing higher up over here and his head will sort of come around so he'll be sort of spiralling. That's the idea anyway. And again, don't know if this is going to work, but let's give it a try. I think I'm going to be using the arc welder for this project so I can actually get right in between the balls because I only, only really want to be doing a little more than a tack uh, in order to get it to stay together but without the weld becoming too obvious and gross. Yeah, let's do that. First one done. Oh, and I've started a fire. Jesus Christ, he's heavy now. Well, that worked out pretty nicely. Pretty pleased with that. What I'm gonna do next for the final finish is I'm just gonna use the wire wheel, but I'm just gonna dust it. I don't wanna take off all this forge scale. I just kinda want to accent the highlights. I'm gonna use a less powerful angle grinder on a lowish speed. And like I say, I'm just gonna tickle him. Okay, we're on the home straight now. Last step, I need to give him a coat of oil. I think I'm probably gonna go with some Danish oils because that's got a bit of varnish in as well, so that'll help rust protect. And then finally, I just need to detail in the teeth, the eyes, and the nose. There he is, all oiled up, the greasy little piglets. Uh, I've just gotta wait a few hours for that to dry, and then yeah, we'll get on with the final detailing. Now, annoyingly, I've broken my little micro tool thingy, so I'm having to find a way to improvise. Finito. One Steelix.